We'll come back to Member for Wade. Um, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I also rise to make a small contribution to this, to this bill, uh, the South Australian Multicultural Bill 2020, and uh, looking forward to, to get through the House. Um, I think it's, uh, as has been said, I think, by all sides, uh, the, the Member for Ramsey, no contribution, indeed, um, by, by the government, is the importance that multiculturalism in this state is, is an important bipartisan issue. Um, and it's, uh, I think it's timely that after um, uh, several decades now, there's been an, uh, an update and a review, a, re a review of the bill, a review of the act, and a, and a review of the importance of and the role of, of the multi South Australian Multicultural and Ethnic Th Affairs Commission, SAMIAC, uh, and the role that they play in, in, uh, in our community in, to ensure um, that uh, multicultural communities, communities where English is a second language, uh, the communities of new migrants and refugees uh, um, have, a, have a space um, uh, and a voice uh, in the public discourse of our state. Um, to that extent, uh, I was uh, somewhat surprised when in recent weeks before this bill uh, came to the House um, uh, that I was contacted by, by members of the multicultural and ethnic, ethnic affairs community about some concerns that they had uh, about the bill as then laid on the table. Uh, and I'm really uh, um, uh, quite relieved that uh, uh, myself and indeed other members of the House, especially member for Flory and, and uh, my other colleagues uh, in this quarter of the of the of the U-shape, uh, had been able to work with uh, people like Mr. Norman Schuller, chair of, of Samiac, uh, Dr. Tony Cochario, uh, and other members of Samiac to to ensure that legislation that's presented to this House in a bipartisan manner uh, does indeed meet that threshold. And I know there are quite a few amendments as tabled by, by the government, which uh, I look forward to supporting, and uh, of course some amendments by, um, by the member for, for, for Ramsey as well, which I will give due consideration to as, as the debate goes on. Uh, but Mr Deputy Speaker, if I could just touch on a very important uh, multicultural event that happened uh, last Saturday. Uh, up at Hill River, um, as it was uh, known and is now known as Polish Hill River, uh, and that was to celebrate the uh, 150 years uh, of essentially Polish Hill River settlement and the arrival of Father Leon Rogalski, SJ, uh, to come to, uh, to Polish Hill River uh, some 150 years ago, which is so important. Uh, why is that important to, to me? Well, um, it's talking about Polish settlement here in South Australia, and of course, for those who don't know, my own family background is uh, of Polish descent. Um, Polish Hill River has been around for many, many years and is an important part of the Clare Valley uh, community and indeed the history of migration settlement to South Australia, with the first Poles arriving in about 1844 uh, and settled in, uh, settled in Tanunda. Uh, and those first Poles were uh, Galash and Wathka, uh, Galash and Watki, as they were uh, known in their Prussian uh, names. And, um, and it was some time later, um, about in 1856, that 131 Poles um, settled in uh, Severn Hill um, at that time. And it was several years later uh, that uh, in, in 1870 that Father Leon Rogalski uh, came to Australia uh, to service that community. And uh, it was really for the first time uh, that, that uh, migrant community from Poland back then had, uh, had pastoral care in their own language um, at the time and, uh, and uh, was so, um, so looked after. As, and the importance of, of really faith to a community and language. And as, as for those who follow the history of the settlement of South Australia, uh, we know that many districts across the state, whether it be in uh, Tanunda, uh, up, uh, up in the Adelaide Hills, uh, where there was a strong Prussian-German um, uh, migration, uh, and many of those people uh, fleeing persecution, uh, um, uh, f at the time in, the, in their homelands and indeed the story of Australian migration and settlement is people uh, fleeing persecution and of course we celebrate St Patrick's uh, Day today and uh, the contribution to, to the Irish community in Australia um, is, is, is next to none has obviously uh, played a huge part in the, in the penal colonies uh, of, uh, of Britain at the time uh, in the history of, in the history of, uh, of this of this nation, and uh, pretty much uh, every subsequent wi wave of, of migrants, um, whether they be economic, political, um, refugees, fleeing war, oppression and famine, 
uh, have come in to make their contribution uh, in this state. But it was really an honour to be uh, up in uh, Polish Hill River on Saturday. The, um, the official opening, of course, was presided by His Excellency, the Honourable Hugh Van Ley, AC, our Governor, uh, Mr. Or his, the Honourable Mr. Michael uh, Kowalczewski, the Ambassador of the Republic of Poland, uh, was in attendance. Um, the Most Reverend Patrick O'Regan, Archbishop of Adelaide, uh, was in attendance um, at a huge amount of the Polish community in Adelaide, I would say some 200 people. Uh, I was joined by uh, the, um, the government was represented by uh, the Honourable M Michelle Lensink from the other place. Uh, the member for Frome, uh, Mr Jeff Brock, was there. Uh, it was just a wonderful occasion for community. And uh, to that extent, I would really like to thank the dedicated volunteers of the Polish uh, Hill River Church Museum, uh, led by uh, Chairman uh, Jerzy Mrotek, Vice Chair Irene Sosnowski, Treasurer Kristina Jagewski, Maintenance Officer Richard Nowakowski, Curator uh, Edward Dudzinski. Um, Secretary is unfulfilled, but Ted Dudzinski is filling that role at the moment and probably will for the foreseeable future. And all the members of the Polish Hill River Church Museum, who really are the custodians of 150 years of tradition of Polish heritage in the Clare Valley and, of course, across all of South Australia. I know for, for the last uh, several weekends in the lead up to last Saturday, they, they've been up there, up there maintaining Polish Hill River um, and ensuring that the, the, the festivities on Saturday were, were, were exceptional. And indeed they were. There was, of course, a big contingent of, um, of Coolum pilgrims who came over from Melbourne, uh, especially from the, from the Jesuit order. And indeed, quite a lot of Poles from Melbourne came across as well. I think they were excited to, to get out of Melbourne. Uh, for the first time in a long time. So it was a really a wonderful occasion of, uh, of celebration. And uh, as always, his governor uh, was excellent in his address uh, to, uh, to the community. Um, I think many, many in the Polish community see uh, His Excellency as an honorary Pole. Uh, his story of migration to this, to this wonderful state uh, I think aligns with many of the Polish community. But uh, for myself, it's just uh, uh, fantastic to see um, last week's celebration go ahead. They were actually meant to happen last year, but uh, COVID postponed it. So it was actually 151 years uh, of settlement. Uh, but uh, to, to George Motek and his group of volunteers for putting together um, last Saturday is a truly an, an, uh, a credit to them. And, and I know across all communities, uh, multicultural communities of South Australia, whether it be the Polish community, the Vietnamese community, um, the Cambodian community, uh, people, people of their heritage, the Italian community, uh, uh, Member Fafori indicates as there are many uh, Italian communities in, um, in, in her electorate. Um, everyone is so proud of, of, of what they're doing. I know in a couple of weeks is the, is the Polish-Hungarian Friendship uh, Society uh, annual get-together, and no doubt the member for Cheltenham will be there as he's proud of his uh, Hungarian background. And I think so many in this House are, are, are proud of, their, of, um, of those who've come before him and uh, share that uh, special relationship. So it's so important, as I said in the beginning of my remarks, that when it comes to multiculturalism in this state, that we have a bipartisan approach. Uh, multi-partisan approach, even, uh, uh, many would say, uh, that all South Australians are on the same page, uh, that we always look to, um, to assist those who, who are new to our nation, who may struggle with, with our language, our custom and our norms, and it really is the role of Samiak now over many, many years, who have been out, out there to be able to, to foster that relationship with, with new Australians, with migrants to this nation, to make them feel welcome. Uh, to help show them uh, how, how their communities can uh, work with broader society uh, to ensure, as I said, there are, there are language classes um, that especially uh, young mums and children um, over, the, over, over the history of migration um, have the support that they need uh, in terms of uh, integrating in a, in a harmonious way in, into our communities to ensure that all South Australians, uh, no matter where they come from or how long they've been here, uh, can make a wonderful contribution to this state.